Uh, I'm Baltimore County Executive Kevin Kamenitz, and I'm pleased to be joined with uh, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, Frederick County Executive Jan Gardner, uh, Prince George's County Executive Rashern Baker, and on behalf of County Executive Isaiah Leggett, who unfortunately is recovering from back surgery, we're pleased to welcome Councilmember Craig Rice. Well, these five jurisdictions have much in common. We face major challenges in the education of our schools, of our state school children. Together, these five jurisdictions represent 59% of the K through 12 student population in this state. And together, we comprise 62% of the state's students receiving special education funding. Together, we comprise 62% of the free and reduced meals for eligible students in our state. And each of our jurisdictions devotes significant sums of our operating budgets to support our schools. But we rely upon the governor to fulfill the state's funding obligations as outlined in the Maryland Constitution. Governor, we ask you to release the $68 million in GCEI funding that's money that is designated to our jurisdictions that have higher costs to educate children, specifically those with free and reduced meal and English language challenges. Let me tell you how Baltimore County would use the additional $2.9 million in GCI funding. Our Baltimore County public schools would be able to support the most vulnerable of our student population whose family incomes qualify them for free and reduced meals. And those who enter, those children who enter our schools speaking a primary language other than English. Using these funds in the current school year, we would be able to hire additional ESOL teachers a bilingual family outreach worker, as well as other resources to meet the needs of the neediest of our school population, as well as their families. Governor Hogan, please stop playing politics with this issue. And when I say playing politics, let's discuss the real facts about education funding. The governor claims he is spending record amounts on education and that the $68 million is needed to shore up the pension system. As to the claim that he's spending record amounts on education funding, the governor's submitted budget actually reduced per student pupil spending by $175 per pupil. The amount of money only went up because of the efforts of the General Assembly, as well as the increase of total enrollment as well as the number of free and reduced meal qualifications, as well as uh, limited English proficiency students. But now the governor claims he can't release the $68 million for education because in his words, it would be fiscally irresponsible. Well, in Baltimore County, we have a solid record of fiscal discipline. We're a AAA bond rated county, and we have the most stable tax rates in the state. We appreciate fiscal responsibility, but Governor, your action has nothing to do with fiscal responsibility. Last April, you said that this $68 million should be applied to the employee pension system, but without General Assembly action, you can't transfer this money that you've set aside. Now, six months later, the state is projecting a significantly higher surplus. That means that the extra money that you wanted to put in the pension system will now happen by operation of law under the General Assembly sweeper amendment. That means, Governor, that you can fund the pension as you wanted and still release the $68 million to our schools. And after doing so, the state would still have nearly $400 million in surplus above the additional $814 million in its own rainy day fund. We can be fiscally responsible and provide for the neediest of our children. Governor, letting the money just sit there doesn't help anyone. Please release the appropriated funds today. It is now my pleasure to introduce my good friend, Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Madam Mayor.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, County Executive Kamnitz. I am very proud to stand here with other elected officials uh, from around the state and stand up for Maryland's children. I am here today out of the frustration that I and many in Baltimore feel that the state continues to deny important education resources, important funds from Baltimore's children. The money that the state is withholding from our schools could have helped our children in so many ways. Smaller classroom sizes, expanded after school opportunities, greater access to technology, additional summer programs, more arts and advanced academics. All things that the governor and his administration say they value, yet the money still sits. We found extra dollars to, in we found, even in tough, a tough budget season, we found extra money to invest in our young people. We squeezed that money out of our budget, put additional $4.2 million because we understand the importance of the times and the importance of finding new ways to invest in our young people. It's time for the governor to do the same thing, to release the funding and demonstrate his commitment to invest in our children and in our school. The leadership, the General Assembly, the, the leadership of the General Assembly recognized this very simple fact last week. The governor needs to stop playing politics with our children. The money is available. All he has to do is release it and release the potential of our young people at the same time. It's time to invest in our children. Now I'd like to really not wait for some time in the future. Their school years are right now. So the time is now to release education funding. It is economically feasible and financially responsible. Most important, a release of education funding demonstrates a commitment to our students, to education, to economic development and job creation, and to our future prosperity. I urge Governor Hogan to release GCEI funding and to join us in our quest to keep the promise of public education. The needs of our school children are urgent. The time is now. And with that, I'm pleased to uh, introduce my friend and neighbor in Montgomery County, Council Member Craig Rice. Well, thank you very much, Jan. And um, you've heard from a number of folks uh, that this is a moral imperative. Um, I want to bring you greetings from our county executive, Isaiah Leggett, who couldn't be here. Unfortunately, he's recovering from back surgery, but I'm happy to represent him as the council's chair of our education committee and also the chair of MACOS, Maryland Association of Counties Education Committee as well. And as I travel throughout the school system, I see the impacts of what happens when we don't fully fund our schools. You know, Montgomery County has nearly 3,000 more students. That brings our total to roughly a little above uh, 157,000 students in our school system. That growth that you see in Montgomery County is very unique, uh, not just in terms of the number, but also in terms of who we're growing with. You know, the interesting thing is, is that, of course, Montgomery County is always seen as the affluent county in the state of Maryland. The reality is, is that we have more children on free and reduced meals in Montgomery County than the District of Columbia has public school students. That's striking because it talks about the need, it talks about the imperative of what we have to do, our responsibility when it comes to educating all of our children. Every single dollar counts. And when we don't get our fair share from the state via GCEI funding, what happens is, is that we have to make up that funding. The challenges that happen when we have to make up that funding are that we have to increase taxes. This governor is playing games. Because what he merely is saying is, I won't raise taxes, but I'm going to force your local jurisdictions to do so because we won't stand by and not do the right thing by our kids. We won't stand by and let our children suffer. We won't stand by and, and, and not allow them to have opportunities to do all the things that they need to to be successful. We as a collective remain committed to our children. The question is, does the governor remain committed to our children? Is the governor willing to step up and say, yes, indeed, I value education and recognize its importance and value when it comes to economic development? Is this governor going to say to those poor children that are trying to get a leg up, that are trying to do on their own, that yes, indeed, I am going to help you? Or is he just going to walk by and watch as we struggle 
to try and make sure that we can give them everything that they need. This is, ladies and gentlemen, a moral imperative. It is important for us to understand these are Maryland taxpayer dollars. These are parents of children's taxpayer dollars. They send them to Annapolis with the expectation we are going to do the great good that comes to the state of Maryland in educating our children. Our governor has not done that. We will not stand by, we will not be quiet, and we will continue to make sure that the pressure is on this administration to understand we will not stand by any longer and allow this to continue. Our parents are fed up, our community is fed up, we as elected leaders are fed up. It's time for this governor to act and release this money. And now I want to turn it over to our great partner who's going to close out, our county executive from Prince George's County, Rashern Baker. Uh, those of you who have followed uh, Prince George's County know that in this last budget, I went through a bruising fight about increasing our property taxes just for education. Let me just give you the background. Over the last five years I've been county executive, we have cut our budget, our agencies, by 5% every year. But we have only maintained in public safety and education. But it's clear to me, as I'm sure it's clear to my colleagues, that if we're going to move our state and our counties and our city, we have to invest in education. Well, the state wasn't doing it. $20 million is what was cut out of Prince George's County because of what the governor is holding back. So therefore, we had to try and make it up. Because we can't tell our parents and our children that they can't receive a quality education because the governor won't give us the money. We can't tell our parents and our children that they can't have class, smaller class sizes because Annapolis won't step up. We can't tell our parents and our children that the programs that bring them to our schools, we can no longer do because the governor won't step up. No, we tried and we fought and we went out. I did hearings for three months in the community. And at every last one of those hearings, what people would say to me is, well, where's the money I sent to Annapolis? Why are we raising tax dollars just for Prince George's County when we give our money to Annapolis? And I had to answer them with this. They're not helping. They're not helping. They're not helping Baltimore City. They're not helping Baltimore County. They're not helping Frederick. They're not helping Montgomery County. They're not helping our children. We can't simply say that we're going to be number one in education without investing in it. And the investment just can't come from Baltimore City. Those aren't just Baltimore City's children. They're our children. They aren't Frederick's children. They're Maryland's children. They aren't Montgomery County's children. They're Maryland's children. They're not Baltimore County children. They're our children. This governor has an obligation to do two things. <clears throat> Former Delegate Rice knows, and I know, the, the government only has to do two things, pass a budget and fund education. That's what you're required to do. Today we asked the governor to step up to the plate, to do what he promised during a campaign, and to fund us. I want to applaud the General Assembly for when the money was there coming out here, the Speaker and the President of the Senate and the men and women who stood behind him and said, now it's time. There's no more excuses. I can't go back, and they can't go back, and tell their jurisdictions how we make up for the funding the state is denying us. Because I don't know where you get $20 million in Prince George's County when we're cutting the budget. So today we ask the Hogan administration to live up to the promise of Maryland and to fund our children's education. Thank you. Okay, we're happy to open up to any questions. Darren? The reason we're holding a press conference and the reason that it's important now, and you saw the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House is, now the money is there. So it's not just calling on the governor, we're calling on people in Maryland to say, hey, we want you to write to the governor, we want you to call the governor, we want you to call those members of the General Assembly and your county executives and your, and your mayor to say we want this money released. This is now in the people's hands, because the money is there. 
the money is there. I, let me just add, I think that the arguments that the governor is presenting uh, uh, aren't sound in the sense that, first of all, he likes to crow about spending the most ever for education, but that's not the budget he submitted. The budget he submitted was funding education at $175 less per pupil than the year before. It's only because the General Assembly found additional funds that the governor can make this claim. And yet, the governor chooses not to fund the money that's otherwise been walled off. It's sitting there. It's just sitting there collecting dust. It's not collecting any interest with today's interest rates. It's just collecting dust. And, that, and he's doing it just to prove a point. He says, well, you have to be fiscally responsible. But our point is that his goal of adding money to the pension fund is now going to happen anyway by operation of law. So this is why we think this is more politics that's going on as opposed to focusing on the needs of these children. And these are very real needs. Children whose family report at free and reduced meal level, children who have limited English proficiency. Local government has an obligation to take care of these children. The governor has an obligation under the state constitution to help provide us with the funds to achieve these goals. That's why we think this is important to keep pressing it. We want you to be able to go back to the governor and say, well, if you already are achieving your goal of funding pensions, why aren't you releasing the money? So let me just say this, as uh, the chair of the, well, <laughs> as chair of the MAKO Education the Committee, um, uh, I have actually requested a meeting and understanding Governor Hogan's schedule with Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford uh, because I want to talk about this. I don't want, uh, and nobody wants, uh, for the perception to be that the Hogan-Rutherford administration is anti-education, is anti-kids. I hope that that's not what they want to, what, what they, what they want to have perceived, but I also hope that they understand that a disinvestment in education is not sound economic development policy. That's important too, because it's important to understand that these long range dollars that go in are going to reap benefits for Maryland in the future, and I hope this governor is seeing beyond his term and understanding about the future. And so those messages are being communicated, but as uh, County Executive Baker said, I think that it's important for others to be engaged as well. And so I've been having conversations with our business community, making sure that they reach out as well, typically not folks that are on the front lines of these kinds of issues, but folks that are very invested in terms of the results of the success of us getting the money that we need. And that's in sound education investment for this state. Let me just say, because I, I was thinking as, as, uh, as Craig was talking, that uh, why would we need to meet with the governor about it? Just think about it. We're all committed to education. We're all committed to making better. If we found money tomorrow, no one would have to come up to us and say, hey, you have some extra money that you can put in education. Uh, let's have a meeting about it. No, we do it. So if he had the information they just delivered to him that the money is there, why wouldn't you release it if you're, if you're committed to education? So that's what I think we're saying is the money is there. That doesn't re require a press conference, doesn't require a meeting with him. It simply requires the governor to be committed to education. Um, several months ago, uh, we did have the governor come to Frederick County for a ribbon cutting for an expansion of a biotech company. And part of the leadership of that biotech company said that they wanted to have an educated workforce. They wanted to have a pipeline of workers. And so, you know, I did speak to the governor afterwards and advocate for the release of GCEI, as did one of the council members uh, in Frederick County. But that was before we had this recent uh, announcement that the economy was recovering and there was more funding. And so I think the time is now because we know the money is there and the need is now in our community. And we see these students up and their families up close and personal. And we really know that, they, that this money will make a difference in the education of our children. 